guys welcome to part five how to set up your intake this is kind of a uh, overlapping part because not only do we uh, show you how to finish connecting the fuel system up after you've done the twin pumps in the back but we also go ahead and show you how to install the injectors and get your map sensor options taken care of there's a couple options for that and uh, in this case of the truck intake also installing an IAT or an intake air temperature sensor uh, because don't forget these trucks were mass airflow originally so the uh, mass airflow meter would have originally had one of these wires here is for the uh, intake air temperature sensor. I'm going to go ahead and show you how we tap into that and actually install the intake sensor then and a different one. I'll show you. We got, I just went on eBay and got myself a regular run of the mill Delphi IAT sensor. I'll show you how to go ahead and install that and use it. I also got the pigtail for it so we can do that. All right, so let's pick up some video footage. The first step what I'm gonna do here is actually remove the intake manifold and get it off so I can work with it. Technically, you wouldn't have to do that. You can leave it on there. Just take off the fuel rail and pull the injectors out. But since I'm switching intakes, it just makes it easier. So I'll pick up with some footage once I have all that removed. Hey guys, here's the intakes side by side. Uh, like I said, some of this doesn't pertain to most of you because most of you will just be using the stock one. But in my case, um, this is one I bought online, had brand, has brand new injectors in it, and uh, some, somebody sold it for just about, I got the whole thing, rails, uh, three bolt to four bolt adapter, blah, 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 for just about the same price as what the injectors are new. So I couldn't pass it up. So I got that to put on. I'm gonna go ahead and take this adapter off so we can run the old three bolt here. Also gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of, the, take these billet rails off. They may get used in a future project, but they are not needed for now. We are going to go with the old 99 to 2000 return style rail. Show you guys how much power can be made through one of these suckers. Give it our best shot anyway, right? So, I don't really need much from this from this old uh, intake as, you know, I don't really need much from this old intake then. Um, like I said, since I'm running an aftermarket, yeah, aftermarket, a, a different map since we're running a three bar, don't need to rob this one. This one has that hole plugged anyway. So I'll just pretty much be uh, getting the throttle body off this and that's about it. I'll we'll strip this one down and get the rails on it. And once that's done, um, I'll kind of show you guys how to do the injectors. Um, these aftermarket rails aren't an issue, but when you use these longer injectors with a stock rail, you usually have to shim up the uh, rail a little bit with some spacers and I'll show you that. Let me get this one stripped down and we'll start showing you that. Hey guys, here's what I wanted to show you. The Bosch, yeah, Bosch, Siemens Deca injectors are longer than the factory uh, Delphi's are. So, what happens when you're using a stock rail on a truck, that is, uh, you got this space here between. So, and the, so the bolts that were there aren't long enough. So what you do is, I just usually go to Home Depot or Lowe's and I'll, I'll pick those up tomorrow and show them to you on here. Uh, and get a, a set of longer bolts and also they have these plastic spacers you can buy different lengths I get those and bolt that right down so that's where we are right now I got the injectors in I had to rob these little metal clips here out of this one I thought I wouldn't have to rob much from this but I did metal clips um, went ahead and put on the adapter kit that comes in our JS Racing Products fuel filter kit so it turns it into 8AN on the feed clicks right onto that factory quick nut line I also have one for the uh, return, it'll turn that into 6 a.m. So uh, next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get this plate off, this adapter plate, and get this throttle body off here and get this put over, and I'll pick up and show you the next step. Okay guys, a little update, I got the throttle body off and removed the studs and moved them over to here. I um, wanted to show you now the trick with this. Uh, with the trucks, it's really nice because we get rid of this canister that's here anyway. So uh, I think this has to do with the evap, we get rid of this. So we just end up putting the sensor right into there. It works out really, really well. Problem is the sensor has these lips meant to grab onto a grommet and they stop it from going in there effectively. So all I do is take and go to the bench grinder with it and I'll carefully go around and mow those down till they're just about flush with the rest of the body. And then uh, I'll smear some silicone on it. Not much, just a little coating for some lube and for some sealing. Line it up dead perfect and give her a whack with the rubber mallet or dead blow and a couple good solid straight on wax and it'll drive it straight in and it isn't going to move and it'll seal and it'll end up having the sensor then right in here getting perfect reading of airflow so i'm going to do that now and i'll pick up the video when i have something else to show you hey guys so 
Just got back from uh, Lowe's to get the uh, bolts and spacers we talked about. Um, these are the spacers that I'm going to use in this. They have different ones, but these are the ones I, they were really low on selection, so I found ones that are close. These will actually be a little too long. They're the uh, half inch by 0.194 by 1. So they're going to get cut down in the bandsaw, and their opening in the center is a little bit too uh, too tight for the bolt, so it'll be drilled, they'll be drilled out. So all you basically do is just have to get these sitting where they want to be, nice and, fl nice and flat, and then uh, go ahead and measure the space in between there and cut the spacers down, drill them out for the bolts, and then these are the right bolts. Oh, tore one open to test it. There they spilled. Uh, so these are... Uh, M6-1.00 by 30. These are just regular class 8. They're nothing super fancy. So that's it. I'm going to go ahead and cut, get those spacers cut down and drilled out and get these fuel rails mounted. And once the fuel rails are mounted, being that this is a shaved intake, I'm going to have to figure out how to tap into it for vacuum. So I'm going to have to supply my waste gates, my blow-off valve, my boost gauge, everything with some vacuum. It looks like possibly I might be able to tie in back here. I'm not sure. It's the only spot left. I mean, of course, if worse comes to worse, I could always drill and tap it for, uh, you know, a brass barb or something. But we'll figure that out as we go. I'll pick up here in a bit when I show you some progress. I'm also going to rob the, uh, the bolts out of this and the gaskets for this as well because this didn't come with good ones. I'll pick up in a bit. Okay, guys, intake's done and ready to put on with the exception of the... Uh, adapter that goes on to the return yet and this isn't tight but I'll show you what I've done gone ahead and put the spacers in cut them down and ran the bolts in put a cap over this and um, because this is shaved it has no vacuum ports I and this is a this truck here was a, a one of those what they call it hydro boost brake system so it didn't use the vacuum port off the back so I gutted the vacuum port stuff out of the uh, um, other intake over there put it into this one and then drilled through it and then pressed this barbed brass fitting in and of course now I have extra connections you know never never too many T's and Y's there's no reason why you can't run everything off one spot especially if it's a nice big healthy spot like this um, unless you have a leak somewhere of course then it affects other items but as long as everything's sealed and good you can run your waste gauge, your blow off valve, your boost gauge uh, your fuel pressure regulator all off the same now this is going to be an experiment um, we're, we're going to try and see how far we can push this stock regulator. We, uh, in the past, this, this car has a stock style one on it. Of course, it's an LS1 style fuel rail from like the 98 um, LS1s that had the regulator on the rail instead of back at the tank. But, uh, and this is making 900 some horsepower fine. Some bad news about the parts truck. I didn't know if I was going to debut this now or later, but I guess I'll tell you guys. If I haven't mentioned it in one of the past videos, uh, when I bought this truck, the guy I bought it off of said that he was sure it was the big rods. Turns out it's the small rods. Heavy truck, small rods, lock-up converter, that's a recipe for disaster when you go big power. So we're going to be holding the power back a little bit anyway. Won't be quite as, uh, as um, aggressive as I had planned if it had been the big rods. We roll with the punches here, so it'll still be a fun, fast truck. Anyway, so the next step now is to go ahead and uh, get the fuel lines ran while the intake's off so it's just a little easier. You know, I said about running the half inch line up uh, and the three eighths line back. I've got all the fittings. I'll show you all the fittings that you'll need to do that. And uh, we'll pick up with some footage once I get ready to put the intake back on and have the lines ran. All right, guys, time to start putting the fittings all together. Um, here we got some of the fittings I'll be using. So. Obviously, these are what we include in our fuel filter kit to adapt to AN fitting. Um, it's uh, 6 AN for both, but since we like to stay with 8 AN for everything else, we do include this adapter on the feed, like this. And then, of course, that'll allow you to run um, your 8 AN half inch line all the way up. And then on the return, we're going to end up putting on the 6 AN to 3 8 barb. And we'll use our 3 8 line. I have a bunch of it up there on the shelf. And we'll run this back to the tank. And back at the tank, we'll terminate it with this. And uh, this. And we will uh, have a three, uh, 6 AN return. And uh, I'll show you the beginning of the half inch feed. We have um, our filter that comes in the filter kit. And as you see, it's 8 AN. So 
what we'll end up doing is using these adapters and these will thread on and allow us to use half inch line with barb and clamps and um, we'll thread this right onto the pump under the filter as well a little hard to do with one hand and uh, that'll give us the half inch line for our feed so I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this to start setting up I don't think I have enough half inch line today and it's uh, so I'll have to wait till they open tomorrow to get the rest of it but I can get the 3 8 line ran most of the half inch line ran and the intake back on today which will wrap up um, this segment so stay tuned for some more video footage showing you how to do the fittings okay guys back here at the fuel tank so I've ran a piece of 3 8 uh, high pressure fuel line you just get this from Home Depot yeah not Home Depot AutoZone or something like that in your auto parts stores technically I could just slip that on there put a worm gear clamp on there and it would be good to go but some people like to do things a little fancy so with that being said we'll go ahead and use this adapter on here and this on here and that'll let us go right in on that this is going to be removed so it won't be in the way and technically I could have used a 90 here instead I might even dig one up if I have one so I'll pick up some video footage with me showing you with the return line all connected alright guys a little slight change of plan here uh, I just, like I told you before, I like to do everything as simple as I can. And I bought the fittings to do this the right way. But there's such a nice amount of stud there and a nice clamp. I mean, 57 cents versus, you know, 10 bucks in fittings. I can use them for another project. So for the return, I clamped it on. That's the way it's going to be. I found a, uh, a plug to cover the old um, one here that went for the EVAP. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this charcoal canister and some of these other lines that aren't needed and uh, this thing back here get that all cleaned out of the way and then I'll go ahead and get ready to start setting up the filter you know the filter is going to go this half inch line I don't have it well there's gas in it I don't have enough of this half inch line to run up to the front today like I said so I'll go ahead and get the filter mounted a while um, I'm probably going to do the filter right back here you know, nice and tidy and then um, I'll get more line tomorrow run up to the front so I'll pick up with some footage with this all done and possibly we might even get the intake on today um, just to button up that part of it stay tuned alright guys we're done back here as far as I can go today without any more line gone ahead and removed the submission stuff we'll turn the codes off in the computer for that um, now, granted you don't have to do that if you live somewhere where you have emissions you could work around and make this still work um, not that difficult to figure out how but I don't need it just more stuff in my way so I've gone ahead then and got my filter here's the, the filter with the fittings on the end for the barbs and I just gotta buy some hose clamps which I don't have any right now either and this is going to end up getting fastened right around here and then this will all be nice and tidy and uh, this is all buttoned up back here all we gotta do now is uh, put the bed back on when we're done all these extra lines aren't needed we can be cut or just left lay they're plastic so they don't weigh anything so I'm just letting them lay there um, so the next step now is going to go to the front of the truck and get the intake on and go from there. Okay, guys, so this is part of the uh, fuel system done here. So you zoom in here and get fancy and show you. So there we have the fittings on there. Half inch fuel line ran back, 3H return ran back. Uh, back here at the pump. Got the half inch line connected to the filter. Filter zip tied up underneath that tray. Return ran here and zip tied in. So we're done back here. I'm going to leave the bed off because it's easier for now until I get the truck outside and put it on. Plus, I can it'll give me some uh, space to get underneath here and do the exhaust. So uh, that ends the segment of uh, the uh, intake, or yeah, the fuel part of doing the intake segment. Fuel is now connected and done. As soon as I get the uh, piece I need to run the oil feed lines, I'll be able to bolt the intake down permanent. So I'm going to get back to now doing the, uh, the turbos, their drains and their feeds and their uh, downpipes now. And then I'll show you some footage of that.